I am an artist trying to understand my own creativity, and towards this goal, I've been trying to teach creativity to robots. There have been half a dozen machines over the years and, and hundreds of algorithms, and, and recently they began uh, to blur the line between uh, human and computational creativity. Here are several portraits painted by the robot uh, and I uh, from the very first, uh, painted back in 2005, all the way to uh, one of the more recent ones, uh, painted just recently in 2017. As I taught my robots how to paint more and more creatively, I realized that creativity wasn't a simple thing, but it was easier to think of as being on a spectrum from low to high. And here I've arbitrarily named the different levels uh, technical experimentation, imitation, and creation. In the beginning, my robot could only do technical things like uh, connecting the dots and painting by numbers. But they were soon able to take advantage of symbolic AI and random number generation and feedback loops to experiment and learn from the experimentation. Things got really interesting though when I taught them how to imitate human artists, including myself and others over the internet. The robots learned to paint with complete creative autonomy. They could decide everything from what to paint, how to paint it, and um, and, and look at the feedback loops and learn. And, and perhaps most importantly, they could decide when a painting was complete. But there was a problem. As good as the robots became at imitating, they could not come up with something new or, or create something unique. And the robot and I were stuck here for a number of years. I wasn't sure how to make it more creative. And, and I thought I'd reached the limits of computational creativity. And I noticed that deep learning was making some pretty rapid advances. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized that some of its creative capabilities were approaching human parity. And, and I began to wonder if there were there was even that big of a difference between uh, human and computational creativity. Here's one of the first neural nets that I implemented. It, it used convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, to uh, take a, a painting and a photo and apply the style from the painting to the photo in a process called style transfer. And it wasn't just a filter or the application of random numbers to get an unexpected effect. It was meaningful stylistic abstraction where the neural nets were attempted to paint this photo of my son in the style of a painting he made. These CNNs worked by breaking the images down into their smallest patterns using convolutions such as Gaussian blur, edge detections, and bosses. And once it got it into the patterns, it would, it would try and understand those, and then it was able to apply those patterns to another image. These patterns could also be compared to the patterns of previously analyzed images to help classify objects in the picture. CNNs allow the robot to be contextually aware and paint the different parts of the painting in different styles. At this point, the uh, robot's neural networks only needed a photo and an artwork to paint the photo in the style of the artwork. The next neural network I implemented was a generative adversarial network, or GAN, that could actually imagine uh, unique faces. A GAN is actually two neural networks competing against each other. One is called a, a discriminator and the other is called the generator. In this face-generating GAN example, the discriminator has shown thousands of pictures of celebrities uh, so that can understand the patterns that make up a typical human face. The generator then creates random images, basically noise, and sends it to the discriminator. The discriminator examines what was sent to it and uh, compares it to its understanding of a face and classifies it as either a face or not and sends this information back to the generator. At this point, both the generator and the discriminator get a little better at what they're trying to do. The discriminator gets better at telling the difference between fake faces and real faces and the generator learns a little bit about how to make its random noise more face-like. So having learned a little, the generator tries to fool the discriminator with another set of faces, and the discriminator does its best to classify those as faces or not. They both learn a little more, and then the generator tries again, and again, and again, until eventually the generator, after thousands of iterations, gets really good at creating completely artificial faces. So GANs aren't just limited to faces. Any large collection of images can be used, including images of fine art. Using the exact same process, the generator will get better and better at creating artistic images, which is really interesting when you consider creative adversarial networks, which are almost exactly like generative adversarial networks, except that they try and make novel artistic images in a new style. 
the reason all these neural networks are really interesting is that when we work them back into all the other algorithms as part of the painting robots, you can see that they no longer need any human input to come up with completely unique novel portraiture. Gans can completely imagine a human face. You don't even need a photograph anymore, as can be seen by this GAN generated by Peter Leonard of Yale's Digital Humanities Lab. All of these faces were completely imagined. You could then use a can from Ahmed Algamel's Art and Artificial uh, Intelligence Lab at Rutgers University to imagine a completely new style. Style transfer from Bethgay Labs could then reimagine the imagined face and the imagined style. A whole bunch of symbolic AI and feedback loops and classification could then bring it all together with a paintbrush on canvas. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this whole creative process here is that there's no human input. All creative decisions, including what to paint, how to paint it, how to start when the painting is complete, comes from the mind of the robot. It is almost completely autonomous. Is the robot creating art? Uh, probably not for a number of reasons. But uh, when you ask whether or not it's being creative, it, you get a much more interesting answer because it probably is. There really isn't anything that the typical portrait artist does that this algorithm does not. And while it's not clear whether or not this is art, it is interesting to compare it to something like this Van Gogh portrait that everyone agrees is art, because it tells us a little bit about what art is and what art isn't. Well, I don't know what art is and what art isn't, but perhaps one definition of art is whatever this Van Gogh is, that this computationally created portrait is not. What exactly is that difference? I don't know, but it's really interesting to think about.